All right, so today we're going to be using Jest and testing library to test our Next.js app that we made, that we created using TypeScript. So we're going to be doing some test-driven development, and I'm going to show you how I usually set up my project for testing and for enabling that kind of stuff with, of course, coverage and just regular tests. So first off, you need a Next.js project that's using TypeScript. You can also use JavaScript, just regular JS. But if you want to, you can add TypeScript. This is more of a TypeScript tutorial since I know most people are struggling with TypeScript when setting up tests. So first off, create a project with TypeScript and you need to install some dependencies. Now, I'm following the testing Next.js org docs testing. This, this path for setting up these te these tests. Next.js has great documentation for it. And you ha also have some examples that you can follow on GitHub where everything is set up. So go to that link and install the dependencies here. So we will install Jest and the testing library essentially. Now, when we install that, we have to create two files. Those two files are the jest.config.js not JKS, JS, and the Jest setup JS. Now we have these two files. The first, first off, Jest setup JS is just an import of the testing library. And in the Jest config, we have some explanation to do. And it's also fairly simple. It's extremely simple. But we have this module mapper here, which means that we can access components from our project for example if you imagine we had that we have a components directory we can access the components with a relative path like this so you can say for example slash components slash my button and everything is going to be working now when we set up these two files we also uh, need to set up our package.json so if we go to our package.json and we go to scripts we can set up a test script and a coverage script. So we can so we go to package JSON and write these two new lines. This is Jest and Jest with coverage. This basically means that we're, we're going to execute Jest and we're going to have a coverage report. I'll show you that later on in the video. When we create these two scripts, we are good to go and we can start writing our tests. So now you create a new directory. It's called tests you can do it without the underscores or with the underscores so i'm gonna go with test or with underscore underscore test okay and in this directory we can choose how we want to organize our stuff our components and pages what i like to do is create components and create pages so our components that i that, that we're going to be testing are going to go in, in the components directory and the pages are going to go in the page directory. So let's look at our app here. This is just the default next app. I'm going to remove everything from here. We don't need this uh, index page and we're going to be creating some new files. So let's say we have a home, let's say we have actually a dashboard dot index.tsx. Here we have this component. Let's just write something simple here. Actually, let's not write something simple here. Let's first try to, to make some tests. Okay, so we can say import react from react and we can say export default function dashboard index page. And let's just return an empty diff with an h1 hello world. Okay, so now we have our component, written component. Let's run the server. Page, I'm sorry, not a component. npm run, de run dev. We go open our server, wait for it to load, and we, we have the server loaded. So let's go, let's go to dashboard slash dashboard. We have the hello world. Now, let's say we want a button here below the hello world, and we want a paragraph that has a class name of blue. What we have to do here is go to our pages, go to dashboard, because we have the dashboard here, 
right? So we, when you open this, the pages here, you want it to essentially be the same. So we have dashboard and you have index.test.tsx. Always follow this convention. You can also say spec instead of test. I'm more of a test person myself. So we can go to test here and this is where we have to write our code for the for our page. So first off, we're going to be importing React. That's the first thing we have to do. Second thing we have to do is import render and screen from the testing library, right? So we have to import that and let's go over the basics. We have to, okay, actually just import the testing library too. So I have testing library just on. Okay, so we have to create the test. We're gonna write the describe function and let's describe the, the what we're testing, the entire suite, the entire scope of what we're testing. So let's say we're gonna describe our dashboard page, right? So we're gonna say dashboard page and we're gonna give it a function. And in this function, we're gonna write some tests. So let's say it should render properly. Meaning that it should just display. When we call the function it just, it, with the page, it should just be displayed and that's it. So let's call it and let's import it first. So we're gonna import dashboard index page from pages. And this, this is ugly, right? This is very ugly. We do not we do not want to have this we want to have relative imports so we're going to say slash pages slash dashboard but this is not available right it says cannot find module so it's corresponding declaration you have to go to just config and check if the pages are set up here they are and we can also go to our typescript config here and we can set that up too so we can say paths we give it an empty object and we say slash pages slash this means this character here this means just all everyone and let's give it an array that's gonna say pages and then again the star all right so let's see if that works now it does so we can con control click on it and there you go. We have access to relative imports. So you can say slash pages slash dashboard and you can access the page. So now our page will render correctly if there's a header in, inside of it, right? So we can get this H1 element and check if it has this hello world text, right? So we have to render the dashboard index page this should be typed in like this we have to render it and now we have to get this h1 element so we can say const header is equal to and we have to say screen dot get by role so in this get by role function we say heading which means it will get an element that has the role of heading which means the h1 tag and now we grab the h1 tag and we can say expect our header to have text content and let's copy over this let's put it in a variable we're gonna say const header text is equal to this and let's say header text okay so this is the first test let's run it and let's see what's hap what happens so we're gonna go to our root of the of direct root directory of our Next.js app and we're gonna say npm run test. It will run the tests and we have our first test that says passed. If we it it grabs the h1 element, checks for this text here, and if it passes, if it, if the text is the same, then congratulations, we got our test working. But let's say we have the wrong input here or here so let's say you're writing tests tests inside of here and you want to check if everything is all right and someone came in and changed this to a b c d e f g okay if you run the tests again 
the test will fail, right? And says, expected element to have the text content of hello world, but we got some gibberish here, right? So this does make sense. So now, if something messes up, you can run the tests and you can see, okay, that messed up, we have to fix this. So now we have our first test. And now we have to implement what I told earlier. Let's say we want a button here and a paragraph. So we're gonna do this first writing the tests and then writing the code. So we should say it should have a disable, let's say disabled button here. And it should have a p tag with class name of blue. So we have these two tests we have to write out. We have to write the render again. You can also write the render here. So before each before each test, you should render out the dashboard index page. But I don't want to get into the entire library. We just want to have a quick setup of how we're going to do things. So we have to render the dashboard index page. We have to get the button. So the button, you can also call it button element if it's more convenient for you. And we're going to say screen dot get by role and we're going to say button. You also have get all by role, which will give you an array of elements that have got that have the button role. You can get the, the button just by itself like this. And let's say that we expect the button element to be disabled. Okay, now we render the page, we get the button element, and we expect it to be disabled. That's first test written. Now we have the p tag with the class name of blue. Again, we have to render the page. We have to say p element is equal to screen dot get by role. And now you're gonna say get an element get an element by the role of paragraph, right? This is not gonna be working. It does not recognize the p tag as paragraph. So you're gonna get it by let's say test ID. This is very important. So we're gonna say get by test ID. And we're gonna have our element, our p element, to be with a test ID of let's say paragraph blue. I hope I spelled this correct. Paragraph blue. So we're gonna get our element by this test ID. When we get the element, we want to check if if it has a class name of blue. So we're gonna say expect p element to have class and let's say blue. Okay. Now when we write our tests and we check if it makes sense what we wrote, we're gonna run the tests again. We're gonna say npn run run test. And one test is passing, but the other two are are failing. See the test two sweet. I cannot pronounce this. Uh, one has failed. This one for the dashboard, and it has three tests in total. One has passed, and two have failed. So now we have to write the code to make these tests pass. So we're gonna say button a hello world button, and we're gonna say disabled is gonna be true. So now when we run the tests again, it should have two passing, right? And there you go. Two tests have passed and one has failed. So it tells you that the P element test, so it should have a P tag with a class name of blue, is failing. And the tests above where the two have failed, it gives you the P element test and the button element test. See, it couldn't find the button. And it gives you a suggestion of which elements exist. There's a heading element, for example, here. So now let's write a p tag. Let's say this is our paragraph. And let's give it a class name of blue. And now let's let's run our tests. The tests have failed. Let's see what happened. Oh, unable to find an element by data test ID paragraph blue. So we didn't get the, the the element by role, we got it by test ID. So we have to go to our p tag. We're gonna say data test ID is equal to the paragraph blue. And now let's run the tests again and let's see what's happening. And the tests have passed. It took 0.889 seconds and it got the paragraph by this test ID and checked 
the class name. We can also say that we have to expect the P element to have text content of what do we have here? Of this is our paragraph. Okay, we run the tests again. And the tests have been working and everything is fine. So this is essentially how you're going to write your tests. If you have a component here, that's going to be input slash index dot tsx. And you have your component that's an input, for example, function input return an input, right? This is just an example. And you're going to export default input course you need to import react at the top if you have this component and you want to test it you have to go to tests components and then you're gonna write input dot dsx dot dot test dot dsx and you can do the same you import these three at the top you import your component Again, you have this problem. So you have this problem for the components directory. You go to your tsconfig.json. You add slash components slash star. I don't know if this is called star professionally, but I'm going to call it star. Components. And then again. Okay. So what is this? The leading slide. It probably wants it like this. I'm just, I'm just going to ignore it. You can check the documentation how it should be exactly. And now you can access the input. So when you write input, you see it gives you the components input. And now you can write describe and it, for example, should have the exact text that you type in and etc. So that's basically how you write your tests and how you should organize your files. Snapshot testing, mocks, end-to-end uh, -end testing, that's all different and you should check check up and read more on it. But essentially, you should always uh, look at this example from that Next.js offers from the official documentation. And now you know how to use Jest and testing library with Next.js.